In today's conversation, we tackle a really important topic, which is sustainability. And what I want to do is look at how Dell is tackling sustainability, both internally as well as enabling its customers to become more sustainable and drive sustainable innovation. And to do this, I am joined by Louise Koch, who is the Director for Global Social impact customer engagement at Dell Technologies. Lovely to have you with me today. Lovely to be here. Thank you, Bernard. So maybe for anyone watching, do you want to give people a very brief overview of Dell Technologies? Mm -hmm. Definitely. So I'm sure many of you know Dell Computers. That's how it all started 35 years ago with Michael Dell starting the company in his dorm room in Austin. These days, Dell Technologies is one of the leading uh, tech companies in the world with 150,000 team members across all continents. And our product portfolio and solutions covers everything within the digital transformation. So from the, the uh, workspace uh, solutions that you know, the computers, the laptops, the screens, to servers, storage, um, everything on the edge, edge, IoT, big data, AI, you name it. So, so we, we cover all of the digital transformation. Very good. You're joining us from Copenhagen or just around Copenhagen today? Yes, that's right. Yes, I live a little outside of, of Copenhagen. Lovely. And so what, what does your role entail? What do you do at Dell? So I'm in a really interesting role being kind of in the intersection of, of our corporate sustainability and social impact programs and then making sure that we actually can engage with our customers and make this part of our our go to market and our customer engagement. Um, so, so I'm leading programs grow globally to to enable our sales teams to make sustainability uh, a value proposition with customers and and even a differentiator also in uh, in the business, um, as well as engaging in these dialogues with our customers about how how we can work with them to to help them advance their sustainability and and social impact targets. Very good. So. Um... How, how, as, a, as a tech company, there are huge challenges. There are challenges around your own environmental impact, uh, manufacturing computers, running data centers. All of this has a, a big um, carbon footprint, has uses material from rare earth materials to, to others. So what are some of the things Dell is doing to tackle this and, and what what what's your your goal in in the longer term yes so we have uh, 22 goals to be specific for for the long term uh, it's uh, being a responsible and ethical company has really been been part of of the dna from from the beginning and is is very uh, close to michael's heart uh, as well um and in last year or actually in 2019 we uh, we wrapped up our 2020 strategy on social impact and launched our our strategy and our goals for 2030 which we call progress made real um, and progress because we have a purpose to create technologies that drive human progress and made real because this is more than a fancy powerpoint this is really about the long and, and lasting positive impact for people and planet um, and it's also about leveraging our our competencies and our reach as a global company to to do more good um, in the world uh, so the way we organize this, we talk about social impact as the overall umbrella for for four pillars, um, which includes the first one, advancing sustainability, uh, which covers everything uh, driving environmental sustainability across the life cycle of our products, across operations and full value chain, as well as protecting people and environment in our supply chain. Then we have diversity and inclusion, uh, which is about uh, creating the workforce of tomorrow, uh, providing access to digital skills and opportunities for more people, and also building uh, a diverse and inclusive workspace where we all will have equal opportunities. And then the third pillar is transforming lives, where we are building on, on the technology, innovation capability, and some philanthropic dollars as well to advance, um, especially healthcare and education and financial inclusion for, for people around the world. And then finally, all of that uh, builds on a strong foundation of ethics and privacy. Uh, 
So, so that's kind of the architecture. And for each of these pillars, we have set ourselves what we call moonshot goals. Um, so if we zoom in on advancing sustainability, we're very inspired by the circular economy, which we think is has to be the kind of the overall design uh, for the future. So by 2030, uh, for every product we sell, we will take back and reuse or recycle an equivalent product. Uh, and 100% of materials for our packaging will be made from recycled or renewable content. And more than 50% of the product content will equally be made from recycled or renewable materials. So, so that's kind of our, our lighthouse or our North Star for, for where we're going when it comes to, to product sustainability. Very good. So, uh, I, and in, in in terms of your own emissions, because this is another another part of it. I guess the yes. the whole life cycle starts with designing the product, then actually making it. There's oh. a, a an environmental footprint. Then is distributing it, and you talked about the recycling of of recyclable uh, packaging, and then it's the also the use element. So you want to make sure, I guess, that the the footprint of your devices is as energy efficient as, as as you can so do you want maybe you can take us through through all of this this life cycle sure sure so when we talk about especially the carbon footprint um, of our products and, and our overall climate commitment so so that's obviously also a very uh, important agenda for us and actually just in, in April this year we launched our net zero goal for, for 2050 um, which covers across all scopes so scope one and two which are which is our own emissions and also scope three which means the upstream the production of um, of our equipment so the supply chain emissions of our products as well as as the use base uh, of our products in, in their entire lifetime uh, and i think these uh, these indirect emissions are 98 percent of of the total emissions because we are such a huge producer of of, uh, of equipment we, we we make and sell more than 200,000 products per day so so that gives you an idea of, of the scale mm -hmm. here um, so so what we're doing here is first of all to to set goals to of course reduce our own carbon emissions and operations uh, by 50 percent in 2030 uh, and we have for 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 10 years we've been working also uh, on our you know on reducing the energy intensity of our products so that means continuously reducing the energy consumption that's needed to uh, for computing. Um, so we were one of the first companies to set science-based targets that are aligned with the Paris Agreement. Um, and we have over the last eight years reduced the energy intensity of products across the entire portfolio by 80 percent um, and now our product group is is actually in these weeks and months they are working to define what's going to be our next goal for for 2030 so how much more are we going to uh, you know how can we continue to to reduce um, and even accelerate the reduction on, on products energy consumption uh, because that's really where the big uh, where the big impact is and and then at the same time we're also working with suppliers in the supply chain to work with them to so cascading uh, this uh, so we have asked our suppliers now to also set goals to reduce their carbon emissions with 60 uh, percent per, per product uh, towards 2030 so another way that we're going to bring down and reduce emissions as much as possible across the entire value chain very good so there's obviously your your own operation which is great mm -hmm. but then as a company that sells 200,000 products a day you can probably make a bigger impact by actually ensuring that your customers use mm -hmm. this technology for the right reasons and it helps develop digital solutions that really drive sustainable innovation mm -hmm. and 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 human progress so how are you doing that so a couple of examples uh one that i love is uh, is one of our customers windcloud in germany so they are a very visionary kind of new data center uh, company they offer data center services to their customers and they chose to to use dell servers because they're more energy efficient and because they have this fresh air technology that enables, uh, that makes them efficient even at higher temperatures, uh, up to 45 degrees. So, so that means that wind cloud can can reduce um, the the cooling and therefore save energy. Um, and at the same time, they're actually using the surplus heat to run an LG farm uh, on top of the data center. 
Uh, so their mission is to be the world's first carbon negative data center who's actually using more and capturing more CO2 than what they are emitting. Uh, and we're a very proud partner to, to WindCloud to do that so they can offer uh, data center services to their customers that are carbon negative. Uh, so that's one example that's very close to our technology. Um, another example is, uh, is uh, down under in Australia. Uh, where uh, our team has been working uh, with um, uh, with a local uh, citizen organization called Citizens of the Great Barrier Reef, um, working with researchers also from from universities um, who are you know on a constant um, uphill mission to keep monitoring the climate impacts of the Great Barrier Reef and 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 be able to use the resources where where it's needed the most. So what we did there was to partner with Intel. Um, to, to build a platform and engaging then, so the, the citizens of the Great Barrier Reef are then engaging uh, fishermen, divers, uh, sailing boats, everybody who's sailing and who's on the reef, um, you know, during the day to take photos and help them capture um, photos of, of the state of the reef and then upload that on the platform. And then others like you and me uh, and, and Dell team members can then go in and help to actually organize and code and sort those images. Um, so that's another way of, of collective efforts, engaging citizens to, to help protect one of, of our natural wonders of the world. Beautiful, yeah, nice. And, and I guess there's the, the as a society, we need to tackle these issues on a much bigger scale. Mm -hmm. So we need to make sure our cities are run in the most efficient way, that we, the, the way we grow our food um, has to change. So agriculture is, is yes. has to be transformed. The way we produce in a similar fashion to what Dell is doing, other companies need to follow. So I, I guess technologies that you enable, things like the Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, um, the cloud, all of this enables companies and 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 countries and cities and and uh, communities to become more sustainable. Mm -hmm. Do you have any examples? how you do that? Yes, I mean, now you say smart agriculture. So another great example is the area farms that we're working with, uh, who were transforming what agriculture looked like. I mean, I grew up the countryside in Denmark, so we had like fields uh, outside, which most, uh, I think that's what most of us think about when we talk about agriculture. But but area farms are actually building virtual farms, or vertical, uh, not virtual, but vertical farms. Um, in cities, in big warehouses, so so it's almost like an IKEA warehouse with uh, with stacks of, um, of of farms where they grow especially vegetables. So this is in a completely controlled environment with with monitors that enable them to monitor temperature, to get the exact amount of water and fertilizers and lighting as well to optimize the growth conditions for the plants. They're also able to uh, to reduce uh, the water and resources. So they can actually produce up to uh, more than 300 times more uh, agricultural output uh, per, per hectare and at the same time reduce uh, water consumption with, um, with more than 100%. Um, so, so another interesting uh, innovation here. Um, and yes, cities as well, we know that majority of the population, a global population today lives in cities and this is only going to grow um, to even larger urban um, centers and mega cities over over the next decades. So cities are on one hand part of the challenges, uh, but also part of the solution because we can actually optimize um, sustainable living more in cities. Um, so here we have our our digital cities team who's working uh, with uh, with mayors and city leaders to to optimize uh, traffic flows uh, in the city with real time monitoring um, or they are working to optimize also uh, buildings who are big users of, of energy for cooling and heating and lighting um, and utilities. So with smart solutions, they are driven by IoT, by machine learning, uh, big data constantly having this live monitoring um, and management is enabling um, city leaders uh, to, to drastically reduce also energy emissions in, in buildings or in, in traffic. Great. And then you, you touched on some of the philo philanthropic uh, activities that you've got mm -hmm. going on. What I'm particularly passionate about is education and healthcare. I think technology can make a, a huge difference there. 
Um, and any views on that? Any examples? Yes, definitely. I mean, we have, of course, we're seeing how high performance computing uh, around the world is, is helping researchers to uh, to diagnose, for example, uh, cancer um, because you know, just a few years ago, it, it would take months uh, to actually do an analysis of the DNA of a, of a human body. Uh, if you print it out on, on paper, it would be uh, as high as the uh, uh, as the um, uh, Statue of, of Liberty. Um, so that's as much data we have in our bodies, which is quite, uh, quite extraordinary. Um, but now with high performance computing, the entire um, DNA of a, of a person can be analyzed within hours. So that's enabling uh, doctors and researchers, for example, to better diagnose um, uh, rare cancer diseases or other types of diseases. It's also been um, one of the reasons why it's been possible to, to develop COVID vaccines, uh, you know, at, at a pace never seen before, um, where, by the way, Dell has also been supporting um, researchers uh, in, in this effort. Uh, so healthcare for sure, but also expanding access to healthcare. Our team in India is working and has been working with the government of India and Tata Trust to expand what we call digital life care. So that is basically enabling the, um, the nurses, uh, the healthcare practitioners in rural areas to, to screen the population for non-communicable diseases like diabetes, like high blood, uh, blood pressure which you know can be diagnosed and treated but if it's not diagnosed it, it becomes a very severe condition so so they are helping to screen for these diseases so that people can actually get treatment and at the same time they are then generating healthcare records for these citizens that were never there before so the citizens will get better access to healthcare, and the government is also based on better data now better able to manage healthcare systems for 1 billion people in, in India. Um, so that's another great example of, of healthcare. Um, and then finally, within education, lots of developments in, in mobile education platforms. Um, one of the examples that, that I love from Dell is our partnership uh, with Computer Aid on the solar learning labs. So they are basically IT classrooms in a container with solar panels on top and some aircon. Um, so entirely independent, they have their own electricity uh, generation with the solar uh, that runs uh, 12 uh, highly energy efficient computers inside, um, inside as well as their own you know, server and connectivity. So we have 21 of these uh, classrooms containers now uh, in various countries in Africa in South Africa, Kenya, Nigeria, Morocco. Uh, we have in Latin America and Colombia, um, which is launching in Mexico as well and preparing also in Australia for Aborigine communities. Um, so, so these are again providing access to, to digital skills um, and opportunities for kids living in low income communities in, in the rural areas and urban areas. Um, and I have just myself actually over the last four weeks, I've been involved in a mentoring program with one of our solar learning labs in Johannesburg, where I've been connected with Faith, who's a young girl, she's 13 years old. Um, and she was in this program also to inspire her and her classmates to, to go for, you know, go reach for their full potential. Uh, so she wants to become a doctor. Uh, and so we've been talking about how she can unfold that vision and how she can move towards that and be inspired and take steps. And of course, also how technology can, can help her to, um, to realize that vision. So, so that's been truly inspirational for me as well to, uh, to actually connect with Faith, who was in the Solar Learning Lab, and we had the video connection just like you and I have now, um, with a bit of dropouts once in a while, but, uh, but we were able to connect and, and talk across, uh, you know, from South Africa, Johannesburg to Copenhagen. That's, that's quite amazing. Wonderful. There are so many great examples and such an important course. So thank you so much for sharing those with me. Of course, my pleasure.